By the early 1900s, hunting, competition with domestic livestock, and extensive habitat alteration had drastically reduced Sonoran pronghorn numbers. In 1967, the Sonoran pronghorn was listed as endangered, but despite that designation and the protections it afforded, the Sonoran pronghorn continued to slide rapidly toward extinction. This is an endangered species and perhaps recognized as one of the most endangered species in the United States. The Sonoran pronghorn was actually first listed in 1967 uh, because of its low numbers and there was an original list with about 20 species on it and it was also included in the 1973 uh, act which is what most people think of for the Endangered Species Act. The Sonoran pronghorn is now confined to slim fragments of its former range in the United States and Mexico. In the decade between 1992 and 2002, the southwestern Arizona population, the only one left in the United States, plummeted from 179 to an estimated 21 animals. There's actually uh, five different races of pronghorn. Most people are familiar with the American pronghorn, which is found up north up in Wyoming and Montana and there's hundreds of thousands of those up there but the Sonoran pronghorn is one of the five subspecies and in the United States here we only have approximately 75 of those uh, although that was last year we're hoping that the counts this year will show uh, around a hundred animals. The fate of fawns has been particularly dismal. During many years of the past decade not a single fawn has survived. An alarm call for any species a potential death rattle for the Sonoran pronghorn. In the face of these dire circumstances, immediate steps have been taken by governments and conservation groups alike to stabilize and recover the Sonoran pronghorn population in Arizona. In the desert, water is king. With it, you survive. Without it, you perish. History has taught us that the Sonoran pronghorn is no exception. Conservation groups have come to the rescue of the Sonoran pronghorn by developing water catchments strategically located across the desert. A number of the recovery projects that we're working on, for example, uh, forage enhancement and water development, require us to uh, solicit and use volunteers to help us actually construct and maintain uh, these projects. And without uh, groups like the Arizona Antelope Foundation, the Yuma Valley Rod and Gun Club, we wouldn't be nearly as successful or far along with these recovery projects as we would be otherwise. Another important step was to construct a breeding enclosure to give the captive Sonoran pronghorn better odds of survival. We began this project three years ago after the drought of 2002 in which 80 percent of the wild herd in Arizona died. Uh, we brought uh, pronghorn in from the wild and also from uh, Mexico. Those initial Sonoran pronghorn were placed into the 640-acre breeding enclosure. And we began uh, breeding them in captivity and basically controlling uh, the availability of food and water and removing predators from the captive breeding pen in the hopes of having increased survival of young. One of the challenges associated with breeding programs is what to do with excess males. Like most wild animals, the males will fight for dominance, for the chance to mate. With an animal so highly endangered, we can't take the chance that a single one will be injured during a breeding battle. Better to release some from the enclosure to protect all. The excess males can supplement the wild population since they're no longer needed or necessary inside the pen. We're attempting to release the first Sonoran pronghorn raised in captivity back into the wild. But wild animals can't be herded like cattle, so more direct measures need to be taken to selectively remove target animals while causing minimal disturbance to the rest of the herd. We're capturing the males by using a tranquilizer gun and using a, a drug that basically immobilizes the animal. What we're using to immobilize these animals is a narcotic or an opiate dr drug that is a brand new a uh, drug on uh, an experimental basis in the United States called thiofentanyl. Thiofentanyl is a very rapid acting opiate that will put these animals uh, under a state of immobilization very rapidly and really the drug of choice for pronghorn antelope. En route to the recovery pen, 
we maintained a, a acceptable level of anesthesia with a drug called ketamine, which is routinely used in wildlife medicine. And that allows us to remove the animal from the pen, fit it with a radio collar, take body measurements, you know, assess the general health of the animal, and uh, later to be released into the wild. We're using uh, basically a disposable captured dart. It's propelled by a, uh, a 22 blank cartridge and uh, we lure the animals in close to our blind with, you know, supplemental feed. I think I got a shot. Good shot. We had a very predictable immobilization with this animal. Once the animal was down, a team of veterinarians then uh, monitored and assessed that animal throughout the entire mobilization. We placed an IV catheter in a jugular vein. We monitored uh, vital parameters including temperature, pulse oximetry, pulse, respiration, and the animal was transported to a recovery pen. Water's keeping him cool. We're just trying to keep his temperature at a reasonable level while he's under anesthesia. These animals heat up very quickly. They have hollow hair, so they're very well insulated. When they heat up, it's hard for them to cool down. We're going to give him some vitamins uh, just to give him a head start in the real world. This is an absolutely brand new technique we're using to move these animals out of the pen. We'd like to have as many medical experts here as possible in order to f help facilitate a successful procedure. The capture and handling crew also included three highly respected wildlife veterinarians from across the globe. Besides myself, we have Dr. Yvonne Kusain from the National University in Mexico City, who has extensive wildlife capture experience. Also, Dr. Dave Kenny, who's a senior veterinarian at the Denver Zoo. I don't think we could have had a better immobilization. Uh, last night, uh, our immobilization went as predicted. Uh, the animal was very stable throughout the entire procedure, and uh, we moved very quickly, very efficiently. Uh, as, a, as a medical team and as a recovery team to facilitate this first release of a Sonoran pronghorn in the United States. The following day, another male was captured using the same technique and released into the five-acre holding pen. Once both animals were stabilized, the release crew opened a side of the enclosure pen and the first Sonoran pronghorn raised in captivity in Arizona ran free across the desert. Well, the, the hope is with this project that we'll be uh, releasing pronghorn for about the next seven years, and this will build the population up to where uh, we can delist the species. When trying to recover a species this far down on their luck, you don't put all your eggs in one basket. Recovery criteria for the Sonoran pronghorn calls for a second population to be established in the U.S. and the current population to number at least 300 individuals or for the current population to reach a size that will promote a stable population. Multiple populations are more desirable than a single population because they prevent a single regional catastrophic event like disease or a high predation rate from causing the entire species to become a memory. It was really quite exciting when uh, that has how smoothly this went, how choreographed uh, we'd, we'd worked out our plans on who was going to do what, and it all came together and worked really well. 